Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part five of my JavaScript project tutorial series. This is going to be a fun one because one of you guys asked me how to create interactive maps, and I'm going to show you how to use SVG files. The whole entire tutorial is going to be 100% from scratch, and I'll be using Illustrator to make everything work really cool. And now I'm going to jump over and show you the finished project. Okay, so here it is. This is a map of the United States, and what it's going to allow you to do is to just click on any of these little buttons down here and then show what presidential race won in each of those states just by clicking the button. So pretty cool stuff. And if you didn't know, red is represented with Republicans and blue with Democrats. So pretty neat stuff, and now I'm going to show you how to make it. Okay, so this is Adobe Illustrator, and I am going to go and just get a random image off the web and place it inside of my document. So right here, I have a USA map in a ping format, and I'm just going to click on place. I'm going to jump in here and throw it in there. All right, so now we have an image. So how are we going to turn it into something that is usable? Well, the very first thing we're going to do is go object and artboards and fit to artwork bounds. So that's gonna get everything right there on our screen so we can work with it. And now that the image is still selected with a big giant X on it, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we have image trace. This guy over here, that's under this window and image trace right here. So if you have that selected, then what we're gonna do is go and convert it into paths that we will be able to easily convert into selectable areas that we can then work with with JavaScript. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to preset and I'm gonna change it to three colors. Now, of course, if you were working with more than three colors, you would just change it to whatever you're working with. This isn't specific to maps or specific to only things that are two colors by any means. Then over here with view, I want to set this to tracing results with outlines. Method down here is going to be set for overlapping. I want to make sure that you can see everything here. So we're going to change this to overlapping. And then of course it's going to perform some calculations. I should have had preview unselected. I'm actually going to unselect preview right now. Click on that. And then I'm going to click on trace. Now that I have that all set up, I'm then going to come in here to object. And I'm going to come down here to image trace and then I'm going to click on expand. As you can see, everything has been traced real nicely. I'm going to I'm then going to come up here where object is and I'm going to come down here where it says ungroup and now I'll be able to select all the individual states just like this. You're then going to want to zoom in so that you can just select the black part of it and you'll see that you have it over here so it will be black right there and then you want to come up here and go select and same and fill uh, fill color select that and you'll select all of the blacks and you can just click on delete and now you'll have all of your states all separated then what we're going to need to do is this is an extremely complicated example but basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to create new layers now so i'm going to go over here, click on this and go new layer. And I'm gonna say Washington's gonna be the name of my layer. Click on okay. And then what I'll do is I'll go and select Washington and cut it out of there and then click on the layer where Washington is and then go edit and paste in place like that. All right, now we have Washington all set up. Then what we're also gonna to wanna to do is go and put an outline around all of the individual different states. So in this situation, I'll just do a select all on everything. And then over inside of properties, I'm gonna click on stroke and I'm gonna say that I want this to be black. And then I want to expand the stroke until all of the spaces are all filled. So I can just click on this a couple times. And then you can just play around with it until you get your stroke to a point that actually looks good. And you might want to move the states around or whatever you're going to be working with here until all of that looks nice and good. And make sure this also has a stroke. Okay, so that's also set for two. Now I'm probably going to do a little bit of styling here in the background, but I'm just going to keep this quick. Of course, you're also going to want to go and get all of Hawaii. See, Hawaii is all broken up down here, so I'm going to select all of it. And I'll go X to cut that out of there. Go create a new layer. Call this Hawaii. Click on OK. And then paste Hawaii back in there. But I want to make sure that I paste it in place. So edit, paste in place. And then I'll continue doing that for all of the states on my screen. Now you can see this is where I'm at the point where I have all of the individual states all on a separate layer. And also have went and moved some states around. You can see a little bit of overlapping here and a little bit of gaps, but that's okay. This is just tediousness stuff that you'll have to play with on your own. 
but you can see I have a layer for every single state. Very, very important. Everything that you want to be able to edit with your JavaScript code, you're going to have to have on a separate layer. Now that I have all of that set up, what I can do is just go to File and Export and Export As. And I'm going to export this as an SVG file. And then I'm going to go and find where I want to put it. So you can see right here I have JS map tut, which is where I'm going to put my final file. And then I'm going to click on export. Now you want to make sure everything is set here exactly the same. Most importantly, you want to make sure that layer names are used for your object IDs. Internal CSS for styling. Font doesn't matter because you're not using fonts. Images don't matter. Decimal for two and minify unchecked and responsive checked. Now if you click on show code, it'll actually show you the final code that you're going to be using. And you can see right here that all of the individual states and all the paths associated with those states are automatically going to be generated. And then we'll be able to target and change the styling on these individual states with our JavaScript. But now that we have all that set up, we can just click on OK. And it's going to go generate it for us. All right, so now what I'm going to do is go build the web page and write all the JavaScript. Now in the description underneath this video, you're going to find all the code as well as the EPS file and the original file. So you can go ahead and play with all of that stuff. But I'm going to go and create all of the overall layout here. So it's just basic HTML. And you can see I called this JavaScript presidential maps. Here is a link to a CSS file. And here is a link to my JavaScript file. Before I go on, I'll show you the main style.css. It's very, very simple. I just have a body with some padding and margins and borders. You can pause your screen if you want to type all that in. I didn't want to cover it all. I have a CSS tutorial if you want to learn more about CSS. And I basically have a wrapper around everything just so that I can go and have everything be centered. And then I'm going to be using a custom button here and you can see all that. So that's all of the uh, CSS code that is used in this entire tutorial. So back over into the HTML. All right, so down inside my body section, what am I going to put inside of it? Well, basically, I'm just going to paste that SVG file and you can see the SVG file is right here. And that's going to make it very easy for me to go in there and edit everything. But I'm going to put in the buttons here first, as well as a wrapper. So right after body, I'm going to go and put a div inside of here and give it the class name of wrapper. Then inside of that, I need to put in my buttons and I'm going to throw some break statements before that, but this is going to be very, very simple. So I'll have button type is equal to button class is going to reference the class name that I gave it inside of my main style.css. So this guy here is the button styling that I'm going to be using. I can just go and copy this. You can say it's exactly the same as what I have right there. Then I'm just going to use on click here because I do not need to change anything is equal to and then I'm just going to go and call specific functions to call based off of which one of these buttons was clicked on. Then after that, I'll put 1996 results like you saw at the beginning of the tutorial. And then I just have to create a button for each one of the years that I want to deal with. So I have 1996, I'm going to have 2000 and 2004. Again, I'll just change the function that I'm going to be calling and this right here. And there I have all of my buttons inside of there. And now what I need to do is I'm just going to go and get this raw SVG file and I'm going to copy it. So I'll select all and copy it. Jump back over into the HTML and then I can just paste it directly inside of here. And then I will be able to work with everything. Just paste it inside of there and there is everything. And then all I want to do here is at the end of the SVG file, I'm going to throw in some break statements between it and the buttons that I have. And that is all that I need to do to get all of that complicated stuff to work. And you can see it's just the SVG file that was pasted directly inside of the HTML file. And you could, of course, reference this uh, document or do whatever you want, but you cannot import it as an image or put it inside of an iframe because that's going to cause all kinds of limiting capabilities that are not going to allow us to edit it like we will want to with our JavaScript code. Okay, so everything's set up. Now I'm going to jump over and write that JavaScript code. All right, so the very first thing I want to do is I want to reference, I'm going to create a state array that's going to have all of the states inside of it, and they have to be exactly the same as the layers that you defined inside of Adobe Illustrator. So very, very important. So I'll just go Alabama, 
and every other state that we have inside of there. I also have uh, Washington, D.C. here set instead of the District of Columbia, but that's the way that I had it inside of my Illustrator file. Once again, the Illustrator file will also be available in the link underneath the video. Now what I want to do is I want to go in here and create a results array that will be referred to for each of those years. Yes, I could use a database, but I'm not going to. And I decided to use a zero or a one based off of if a Republican or a, or a Democrat won said state. So I just went in there and plugged in all of that information for every single one of those presidential elections in each one of those individual years. So once again, a zero is going to be a Republican here and the one is going to be a Democratic win. And I'm not making a political statement by saying one is a zero and the other is a one. I'm just using it mainly because it's simple. Now what I need to do is go and get this working with all of the functions that I referenced with my buttons. So here are the buttons and I'm just keeping this nice and neat and easy to understand. So I'm going to have to create one of these for each one of the buttons. And yes, I could do all kinds of fancy things, but I just want to keep this tutorial very straightforward here. I could condense the code, but in doing so, make it, the code a lot less understandable. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a function that's called change colors, which I'll create here in a second. And I'll pass in results in 1996 inside of there, which is going to be in this situation, this array right here. And then we will process based off of what the array name is. Now what I need to do is I'm gonna create one of these and I could use a switch statement. Like I said, I could do all kinds of fancy things, but I'm just trying to keep this tutorial straightforward so it's easy for pretty much anybody to understand. So I'll do the same thing for the year 2000 results. And I'll also do the same for 2004. Once again, all I'm doing is changing what array is being passed in, 2008, 2012, 2016. So we got all those functions all set up. Now all I need to do is come in here and create the change colors uh, function. And it will be passed in the array that I want to use for going and changing the colors inside of it. Then what I need to do is just create a for loop and this for loop is going to loop as long as there are additional items inside of the state array. So this guy way up here, so it's going to cycle through every single state that we have. So I'll just go i is less than the state array and then I will increment i as I go through that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create state element and I'm going to go and target each specific element inside of the SVG tag, you know, that image that I had went and created. And how I do that is I just go document get element by ID and then I'll say state array and I will grab out the specific string that I'm looking for. So what that's doing is state array, once again, is these names. These names are exactly the same as the layers I defined inside of Illustrator. Then if I jump over into the SVG file, you're going to see that this group tag right here, this is what I'm specifically targeting. However, I want to target the path and then I want to change the fill color on the path. So how do I do that? Well, I'll show you. So I went and I grabbed that group tag that I had there. And now I'm going to say four and j equal to zero while j is less than state element child element because actually in the case of hawaii and michigan there's actually two paths inside of one group so i'm targeting all of the child elements and if you want to find out how many elements are inside of a tag you go child element count and that'll get you that so i'm going to cycle through each element or each child element inside of this tag that I went and targeted right here. Then I'm going to say if array year, now I'm going to be using the year that was passed in, so specific data that's specific to each one of those years, I, and then I will say state element, and this specifically array year is going to be this guy. So it's telling me, is it a Republican or is it a Democrat? And I'm going to color it either blue or red, depending upon which one of those comes back as true. So I'll state state element, children, and J. And if I want to set an attribute on an element, I just go set attribute. 
and I specifically want to change a style on said attribute and that style I want to change is the fill color and the color that I want it to be in this situation is this color right here and then I will just say else if that is not true so if true we're gonna change it into a blue and if not true we're gonna change it into a red so pretty simple. I mean, I'm doing something that looks really complicated, but it's really not that complicated if you know what tools to use. So I'll say A92B17 and save that. Make sure I have all my closing tags and save that and jump over and test it. And if I do, you're gonna see that it's exactly what I showed you at the beginning of the tutorial. So we can go 1996 results. Whoops, something went wrong. So let's go figure out what the bug is. First off, I can just go in here and go view developer and see if there's some sort of bug that pops up with developer tools. Nothing does, so let me look at the code. Well, if I see if I come over here to state array, I need to come in and put state array length. <laughs> Otherwise, I won't be able to get that. And uh, everything else is the same. So let's save that, see if that was the only error. Reload it, and now you can see it's working. All right, so pretty cool stuff, fun tutorial for me to make. I'm happy I was able to also make a tutorial that solved the problem for people, and hopefully you guys like this. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.